That may be the greatest catch I've ever seen in my life. Okay, at the beginning part of the season, like when we're in week one, week two, I mean, usually there aren't that many wide receivers that we can be looking at from the waiver wire that are going to make a difference at our starting lineup because we're not really dealing with that many injuries at the same time. We don't have bye weeks approaching. Well, now, I mean, that's completely changing. Now these wide receivers definitely actually make a difference, guys, that we are going out and getting from the waiver wire. So what we're going to do is we're going to keep it with the wide receiver position at the very beginning of this video. At the end of this video, I think I actually have some tight ends that can make a difference in your league. So definitely make sure that you stick to the end because I know right now a lot of people are having a really hard time with the tight end position. I mean, unless you have Kelsey, Kittle, Waller, Hawkinson, it's pretty gross right now. But of course, before we do that, I need to just go through, pull up our newest YouTube video. That way I can pick out two comments real quick to give away Fantasy Flock Network hats. So if you have not already, make sure you go down there, subscribe to the channel. And if you were subscribed to the channel already, every like and comment that you leave on a YouTube video, you actually go through and get to get entered to win a Fantasy Flock Network hat. Okay, so our first comment going to be coming out from Cole who says more great content. Can't wait to hear my name for a hat. You got it, my friend, you got it. So make sure you shoot me that I was going to say DM, but no, you actually have to shoot me that email with your physical address so I can get that out to you. And now let me go through and our next one's coming out from Lil Wadi who says, Oh my God, I'd rock a flock hat like crazy. I just had all my studs go off. Yeah, buddy, my friend, Happy to see that that happened for you. Make sure you go through, send me that message with your physical address so I can get you that flock out, out ASAP. And yeah, that should be it. Let's go through. Let's talk about these players. Drop that like, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment, and let's dive into Emmanuel Sanders at the first spot. And here with Emmanuel Sanders, I know this is the player that 99% of people are going to be just screaming, headlining their waiver wire pickup videos based on the fact that that Emmanuel Sanders came away with a considerable amount of touchdowns. And at the same time, this is a player that's only rostered in 26% of his leagues. I mean, you are just having him attached to Josh Allen. Obviously, Josh Allen should be one of the most productive quarterbacks in the NFL this year. Josh Allen coming off a monstrous week, and you should expect that to continue to happen through the rest of the season. Now, with Emmanuel Sanders, I want to be honest. One thing that I'm slightly concerned with is the fact that you actually have a very large low target number for him this past week if you're looking at the market share that he had in this offense. Because keep in mind, we definitely have to be looking at this from a market share perspective. I mean, going back to what we had with Allen Robinson in Chicago, Allen Robinson had an atrocious week attached to Justin Fields, mainly based on the fact that Justin Fields couldn't do anything to move the ball down the field, despite Allen Robinson having a 30% team target share. But here, Emmanuel Sanders... Six targets. It doesn't really matter, though, because he comes out and he has five receptions, 94 receiving yards, and two receiving touchdowns at the same time. And a big thing that we have to look at here with Emmanuel Sanders is this is a player that throughout the entire season so far, he has just been playing a considerable amount of snaps. I mean, this is someone that's playing snaps I mean, at a much higher rate than I honestly expected coming into the year, you're seeing Gabriel Davis really not make any difference whatsoever in this offense. I mean, you haven't seen him really make a difference at all so far this entire season. We had reports coming out of training camp talking up Emmanuel Sanders. So, I mean, you actually saw that his ADP when we got closer to the season was getting higher and higher and higher based on those reports coming out of Buffalo but yeah, I think that here, I mean, we just probably have to lean into it. We probably have to say, oh, of course, I mean, with Emmanuel Sanders, based on this performance, based on this Buffalo offense, you have to go through, you have to pick him up, and he's going to be available in the majority of leagues. Now, with that being said, to be honest, the wide receiver that I prefer slightly more in Buffalo is actually going to be Cole Beasley. Now, with Cole Beasley here, I drafted him in a ton of those best ball leagues just because you know with Cole Beasley exactly how many routes he's going to be running. Also, the fact that he's running his routes a little closer to the line of scrimmage in this same great offense. And you're looking at Beasley yet again coming out and getting a ridiculous amount of targets. He had 13 targets this week, 11 receptions, 98 receiving yards. Let me pull up exactly how many targets he's had through this entire season as well. Because with Cole Beasley, I mean, he had a fantastic amount of targets week one as well. Like if we're pulling this up, Cole Beasley actually has had so far this season, 
30 targets through three games. Week two was disappointing, but Cole Beasley has been a fantastic option, has yet to come away with the touchdown. And I will say, you know, that mainly we want to be chasing the target volume, understanding that touchdowns are going to be volatile week to week. And instead, we can try to find those touchdowns based on identifying the wide receivers that are getting the targets, and then the touchdowns will follow afterwards. Now, Cole Beasley, you should expect him to have a slightly lower touchdown rate on a per target basis than what you would have for league average, just knowing the role that he's playing in this offense, knowing that he's running routes a lot closer to the line of scrimmage, not necessarily a massive red zone threat either. So with Cole Beasley here, of course, we still want to be saying that, I mean, if you're getting 30 targets in a course of three games, touchdown are coming soon. Now, the regression isn't going to hit as hard as what you'd expect from a normal wide receiver with a normal profile. But still, I think Cole Beasley is honestly the player that I want in a PPR format. You're playing in a non-PPR league, then yes, go get Emmanuel Sanders. Operating slightly further down the field is going to have a higher overall potential for bringing in those touchdowns. But I think Cole Beasley is the guy that I actually want on this team. And now our next player is going to be a no-brainer available in about 54% of leagues right now. Jacoby Myers, I was very surprised to see exactly how many leagues Jacoby Myers is available in. I mean, going back to week one, this is a wide receiver that came out. He had nine targets week one for the New England Patriots. And yes, week two was difficult to really draw anything away from, given the fact that they went up against the New York Jets. We know this game was a complete blowout. You really weren't looking at anything in particular from Jacoby Myers to get you excited. Well, now he comes out, he gets 14 targets, nine receptions, 94 receiving yards at the same time. I mean, just an alpha wide receiver performance against the New Orleans Saints. In this game, I do want to put a little asterisk next to it and that you had the New England Patriots, for whatever reason, completely abandoning the run. I mean, this is something I did not expect in a million years from the New England Patriots. But as of now, I'm recording this, I mean, at like, 1 a.m. on Sunday night. So we don't necessarily know the exact extent to that James White injury. Now I'll say if James White is out, I know it doesn't necessarily sound like it would impact Jacoby Myers significantly just because they're going through and playing two completely different roles. But James White getting carted off, I'm assuming that James White is most likely, I don't want to say done for the year, but done for a significant portion of the time. There's no way that you actually have James White playing this next week. So here, I think that Jacoby Myers just sees an uptick in his target volume. And at the same time, he's already proven that he is the alpha wide receiver. Maybe Mac Jones continues to improve throughout the course of the season. And with no James White, if they're looking for new players to get targets. And at the same time, maybe they skew a little more pass happy. I think Jacoby Myers could be intriguing. Now, our next wide receiver is going to be someone that was on our must add wide receiver video last week. And we're going to put him on here again. Rondale Moore. And I know a lot of people are going to be wondering why I'm putting Rondale Moore on here. And I will say it's because I want to get ahead of it. I know that we are going to have a million people asking us in the live stream tonight, tomorrow night, the night after that, what we are doing with Rondale Moore after a very disappointing performance against the Jacksonville Jaguars, where a lot of people wanted to start him after his week two blow up against the Minnesota Vikings. And I want to remind y'all what we said coming into week three, that with Rondell Moore, he was a very talented rookie wide receiver, a very talented option that we were wanting to bet on for the end of the season, that we were wanting to bet on for the rest of the year, knowing the role that A.J. Green and Christian Kirk are both playing right now in this offense. I mean, you have to look at the amount of snaps that those wide receivers are getting in comparison to Rondell Moore and understand that for now, you can't start Rondell Moore. You're not rostering him with expectations that this is someone you can jam in your lineup in week four. You can't put him in your lineup week five. This is what we said going into week three based on the fact that the majority of that production he had against the Minnesota Vikings was broken off by that one busted play that you can't just project to happen week to week. It's not like the defense can go, oh, well, we're going up against Rondell Moore this week. So let, let's make sure we throw in just a busted coverage for him in the third quarter. That way he can just pop off for his random 60-yard receiving touchdown. It shouldn't have been the expectation that you could start Rondell Moore this week. We should understand that this is a long-term play in an elite offense. So do not drop Rondell Moore if you have him. And I know right now he's actually rostered in 69% of leagues. But I know that a ton of people who picked him up this past week they're going to turn around and they're going to go through and drop them. And as soon as Rondell Moore gets dropped, you need to go and you need to make a play, try to get him on your own roster 
Because like I said, this isn't a play for right now. You shouldn't be concerned about him not having that role in week three. You should be concerned about him having that role at the end of the season. Now, just going with that same mold of a wide receiver, let's go over to another rookie that does have a very intriguing target profile. Let's go over to Terrace Marshall here. So with Terrace Marshall, I mean, we just have to view him as an option that you're not starting right now. He's a end of season play, but you're actually seeing him come out and he has a career high. Keep in mind, he's played three games, but he's trended in the right direction every single game with his snaps being played. He played the most snaps against the Houston Texans that he has. And I mean, it's literally like just Terrace Marshall up, 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 up. Robbie Anderson, down, 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 down. I mean, with the roles that they're having in these offenses, I think once we get closer to the end of the season, Terrace Marshall will be a very appealing option. I mean, just going back, taking a step back, and looking at Terrace Marshall as a prospect coming out of LSU, this is a player that was one of the very few wide receivers in this NFL draft class that had prototypical size, that was a great athlete, and you know what matters way more at the wide receiver position, at least in evaluating these players coming from college to the NFL is the actual production that they had in college with the context with that production behind it. Now, Terrace Marshall, as a true freshman, really didn't do much at LSU, but as a true sophomore, he came out in 2019. He didn't lead his team in receiving. He wasn't even second in his team in receiving, but keep in mind, he was playing with Jamar Chase and Justin Jefferson and throw Clyde and Brazilaire into that scenario as well. I mean, Terrace Marshall was in a position at L LSU where it would have been very difficult for him to have any expectations at all. And he still had a great season, especially if you look at the end of that LSU 2019 run. And then whenever Jefferson goes to the NFL in 2020 and you have Jamar Chase opting out, Terrace Marshall in 2020 becomes a dominant alpha wide receiver for a much worse LSU offense. So yeah, Terrace Marshall was a great prospect coming in. At the same time, you have him looking like he's potentially taking Robbie Anderson's role. So I think now's the time that you're going to want to go out there and you're going to want to try to pick him up. And he's available in almost all of your leagues. Maybe you don't even want to pick him up this week. And if you're playing in, especially like a 10-man format, if you're playing in a 10-man league, there's no reason to pick him up. Just knowing how talented the players at the end of your bench are going to be. This is more so for a 12-man, a 14-man league. Or if you're playing in a 10-man league, go put him on your watch list. That way, as soon as we have an intriguing spike week from Terrace Marshall, that's when you can go pick him up. Now, our next player is not going to be a wide receiver. We're going to go to the other positions here because I definitely want to be talking about some of these options. Let's stick it with Sam Darnold in this Carolina Panthers offense. Now, keep in mind with Sam Darnold, yes, he's coming off a week where he just went up against the Houston Texans. The Houston Texans shouldn't necessarily expect that to be a very difficult matchup for anybody. But here with Sam Darnold, I mean, he has been extremely impressive through the first three weeks this season. I mean, I think that we can safely say at this point that Sam Darnold with Matt Rule and Joe Brady is a completely different Sam Darnold than what we had previously. Now with Darnold, I will say this is a quarterback that we're mainly going to be looking at him as a streaming option. So keep in mind, you're not going to be playing Sam Darnold every single week, despite whatever matchup he has. I'll say so far this year, he has been a top 12 quarterback on a per game basis. He has yet to have a game where he scores less than 20 fantasy points. So the consistency is there. And if you're looking at that week four matchup, this is what we want to see is going up against the Dallas Cowboys. This is the exact matchup we're looking for that we know Dak Prescott in the Dallas Cowboys are going to be one of the better offenses that can push the ball down the field against the good Carolina Panthers defense, as crazy as that sounds to say. And I think that at this point, you're going to have to expect that, I mean, that game would turn into a shootout for Sam Darnold against the Dallas Cowboys, knowing that here with Sam Darnold, I mean, no Christian McCaffrey means they're not going to be running the ball consistently. Now, it sucks that CMC isn't going to be an option in the passing game. I honestly probably would prefer CMC to be active than inactive. But anyway, I think this could turn into a shootout. Darnold's been very consistent as of late. So I think in week four, definitely a waiver wire option that I do want to discuss. Okay, so now our next player is not going to be a wide receiver, not going to be a quarterback. Instead, it's actually going to be over at the tight end position. And this is going to be Mike Gusecki going from someone that was extremely disappointing through the first few weeks. I mean, he had 12 targets, 10 receptions, 86 yards this past week. Now, let me go through and let me pull up what he had previously because, I mean, this is just a night and day difference with what you ended up having from Mike Gusecki. I mean, if you go back to week one, week one, he had zero, zero receptions, three targets. I mean, just 
horrendous. I'd imagine that this is when Mike Gusecki got cut from a considerable amount of leagues because right now he's actually only rostered in 52% of leagues. So he's available in half of the leagues right now. And I, I'm noticing a trend here. Like if you're looking at this, he has three targets in week one. Then he has six targets in week two. He has 12 targets in week three. Now, I'm no rocket scientist here, but I would assume that means that Mike Gusecki is in line for 24 targets going into week four. So if Mike Gusecki is going to be potentially breaking league records by the time we get to week five, week six, of course, this is a tight end that we're going to need to be chasing after. Now, obviously, that's a joke, but here with Mike Gusecki, I mean, it was encouraging that Jacoby Brissett is going to be leaning on him. And this is something you've seen before with these backup quarterbacks. It's a lot harder to push the ball to the wide receivers in the boundary that you're possibly having to fit it into a tight window. I mean, instead, just check it down to the tight end that's running over the middle of the field. I mean, maybe you just have Jacoby Brissett deciding to lean on that tight end a little bit more. It wouldn't be the first time we've seen a backup quarterback decide to do this with Mike Gusecki. An elite athlete, I mean, that's only 25 years old. This should be a player that you continue to expect to get better. I mean, yes, he's very up and down. He's inconsistent, but the tight end position is disgusting. At this point, I think you have to consider Mike Kiseki. And talking about how disgusting the tight end position is, let's go over to Tyler Conklin. Here with Tyler Conklin, I, I will say thank you. Thank you, Tyler Conklin. In one of the $1,000 Patreon leagues that we are in, it was looking like we were going to lose this past week. We only had Tyler Conklin and Devontae Adams left to go. And I was like, oh, man, there's no way. We're, I think we needed like 50 points or something from the combination of them. Tyler Conklin comes out. He gets eight targets, seven receptions, 70 receiving yards, and a receiving touchdown to go along with it. I mean, just what the doctor ordered. And here at Tyler Conklin, I will acknowledge the fact that that no Dalvin Cook definitely made it where you actually had the Minnesota Vikings have to lean a little bit more in the past, but at the same time, look at what they did with Alexander Madison here. I, I mean, it wasn't necessarily like they completely abandoned the run either with Tyler Conklin. I mean, this is a tight end that just is playing that exact same Irv Smith Jr. role that we thought Irv Smith Jr. was going to have coming into the year. And remember, before Irv Smith Jr. got injured, you actually had Mike Zimmer coming out and saying, well, you know what? No Kyle Rudolph. I mean, Tyler Conklin has been very impressive so far at camp. I mean, they thought that they were going to get Tyler Conklin a significant role before the Irv Smith Jr. injury. So, of course, now that we're actually seeing that translate directly on the field, you have to be excited. I think you have to go chase him where you can. Now, thank you. I really hope y'all enjoyed this video. Please make sure y'all go down there, drop that like, leave a comment, subscribe to the channel. You help out the channel a ton. Also, go get yourself entered to win a Fantasy Flock Network hat. And yeah, I think that's it. I think that's all I got for y'all. And I hope y'all have a great day.